Now, if we're talking about the absolute best food to help you heal, repair, especially after exercise, but from anything like stress, trauma, surgery, hands down, the answer would be red meat. Now, I recently did a video talking about different proteins, which are a little bit better for certain health conditions. Maybe something's better for anti-inflammatory, et cetera. But when we're talking about generalized healing and repair, animal meat, and specifically red meat, is at the top of the list. Because not only does red meat have the most protein, it also has some other amazing things that I'm going to share with you today, which is going to blow you away. Over 30 years of practice, I've never met one person who ever had an allergy to meat, okay? They might have had an allergy to peanuts or eggs or seafood or shellfish or wheat or soy, but not red meat. And just the fact that uh, meat has been villainized, right, as uh, the bad guy, uh, you should start eating less red meat as a way to get healthy. Or overall, it's going to be better for climate change because we know the cows are destroying the climate, which is completely ridiculous. But right there, that one argument, the fact that mainstream is telling you not to do it, the truth is going to be in the exact opposite direction. In fact, it's difficult to heal and repair your body without animal protein especially red meat. And today I'm going to prove it. Now, in past videos, I talked about eggs and I eat a lot of eggs and eggs are awesome. Okay. But if we compare eggs to uh, meat, there is some significant differences. And that's what I want to talk about today. I've also talked about the benefit of having salmon and fish, which I also have once or twice a week. And salmon and sardines are very high in omega-3, which are good, but Beef, red meat, has more protein and it has a lot of other things that can help you heal if we look at the whole picture. I will say out of all the things that are involved in the healing process and the repair process, uh, we need amino acids. We, we need bioavailable protein, which is going to be animal protein, and we need concentrated protein. And if we just compare red meat to eggs, um, red meat is twice as concentrated in amino acids. It also has 1.5 times greater iron, 2.2 times greater magnesium, 3.7 times greater amounts of zinc, and 50 times more vitamin B3 than eggs. It has double the amount of B1, four times the amount of B6, twice the amount of B12, and four times the amount of vitamin K, and five times the amount of omega-3 fatty acids. The ratios are going to be better. And of course, I'm not talking about processed meat from factory farms. I'm talking about grass-fed um, beef. Even if you compare that to chickens that are pasture-raised, they're still fed grains, which kind of throw off the uh, omega-3 to omega-6 ratios. Now, that being said, eggs are also a good source of protein. But as a side note, beef liver has 73 times more vitamin A than eggs. Now, there's another nutrient that eggs have that's better than beef, and that would be choline. It has a little bit more than double the amount of B2 and a lot more folate. It has 12 times the amount of folate than in beef. Beef has something else that I think is like the X factor. Actually, it's four things I'm going to mention. And the first one is carnitine. It's this thing that helps transport fat into your cells, into the energy factory called the mitochondria to help you get more energy. So without carnitine, the cells can't get energy from fat. Carnitine gives you that quick energy when you're exercising. And since we're talking about a really important transport of fuel to the mitochondria, that is essential for healing and repair of your tissues. So not only do we need all the essential amino acids as the raw material for proteins, not just for your muscles, but for all your biochemistry, we also need other things as well, like those vitamins I just mentioned, which are cofactors, but also the shuttle to allow this raw material to give our bodies energy. So if we compare like 100 grams of red meat versus 100 grams of eggs, the amount of carnitine would be like 150 milligrams versus only 7 milligrams for eggs. But as far as the food that has the most carnitine, it would be lamb. But beef is number two. So this beef red meat is at the top of the list as far as giving you a good source of carnitine. Then we have creatine. Creatine gives us that quick energy. It can be used as fuel 
for very, very high explosive intense movements. Both exercise and physical activity needs this creatine. So this is why you see a lot of bodybuilders and uh, weightlifters and people who do exercise taking this as a supplement. Well, guess what? Out of all the foods that you could possibly eat on planet Earth, red meat from beef has the highest amount of creatine. So creatine is just going to give you more energy to heal and repair from exercise. Now, the next compound I'm going to talk about, which by the way, red meat from beef has the absolute highest source, is called carnosine. It buffers this pH, okay, from the lactic acid, the acidity in the muscle. So if you're exercising, this compound comes along and helps neutralize this acid to allow you to exercise longer because the pH messes with some of the oxygen in the muscle. So it buffers the pH, it acts as an antioxidant, and it's also going to help the recovery after exercise and just healing in general of your whole body. And it also even decreases uh, something called AGEs. Uh, and I'm going to give you this term. I don't know if you've ever heard it before. It's called advanced glycation end products. And basically, this is a fancy term for when uh, you have this sugar molecule that's locked up with a protein molecule and it's kind of stuck in the body. So these AGEs kind of plug up the body and they interfere with the function and they usually come from someone that's consuming too much sugar. Well, guess what? This compound helps get rid of those things. So it's considered kind of an anti-aging thing. It can help you just live longer. But out of all the foods that you can eat, red meat from beef has the most carnosine. And then we have coenzyme Q10. What is that? That is a nutrient that helps the mitochondria, the energy factory, where food gets converted to energy. Now, and the best source of coenzyme Q10 is organ meats, like beef liver for sure, but it's also in the meat as well. It's also in fish, it's in eggs, but it's mostly in organ meats. So just in general, um, when I was very, very sick and I stumbled on this ketogenic diet, low-carb diet, buffalo burger was my first food that I ate that I felt so good. I actually healed my body on buffalo burger and hamburger. In fact, to this day, I still feel the best when I consume um, red meat in the form of hamburger. Now, I will do steak and things like that, but I do very, very well on red meat in general. And if you're trying to heal, especially after exercise, or you're trying to repair from some type of injury or trauma, um, you should really consider increasing more red meat and having it more often. And the cool thing about hamburger is it has a little bit more fat than some of the um, like leaner cuts of steak. And there's only two conditions that you need to know about relating to the difficulty of digesting red meat. People that don't like red meat really have low stomach acids. And as someone ages, they get older, they will lose their stomach acids and the taste for red meat goes down. They can't really tolerate it. And there's this very simple solution. Just add some betaine hydrochloride to the meal. I'll put a link down below. You just take three to five before a meal. Okay, you don't have to take it forever. Just take it for a month. And what'll happen is it'll start to increase the acidity in your stomach. You'll start to digest the red meat much better and break it down and start feeling better. But when people get older, they just have a more difficult time because they don't have the stomach acid. And they're also going to have, as a parallel thing, uh, gas, more indigestion, definitely acid reflux, GERD. Those are all signs of low stomach acid. So instead of avoiding eating it, just fix the stomach's ability to digest it. And the one last point, there is a certain genetic condition where uh, someone has a hard time getting rid of iron. They tend to accumulate iron. And so if that is you, then maybe uh, red meat is not the answer. You would want to do maybe poultry or maybe eggs, different protein sources that have lower amounts of iron. But for everyone else, I highly recommend red meat. Even if you're going through your menstrual cycle and you're losing blood, boy, red meat is going to be the best way to fix it because you're probably slightly anemic and red meat has the best iron and B12 in the best forms. So I hope I've given you more than enough information 
to try this out to see if it helps you. But I consume a lot of red meat in the form of hamburger on a regular basis. And of course, I kind of am lucky because I get it from my own farm, but you can go get it from the farmer's market or you can get it online from various sources as well. Like one good source would be US Wellness Meats. I'll put a link down below for them as well. But if you have not seen my video on protein related to other specific body conditions, I put that up right here. Check it out.